Catherine, I think all eyes are on just the one player for the fans there this afternoon. What's the atmosphere like? Well, as you can hear, it's pretty noisy. Uh, people just starting to arrive uh, on the pitch behind me. This pitch, of course, the very place where Kylian Mbappé really uh, honed his skills as a player with the local team, uh, not just as a teenager, but also uh, during his childhood. I've just been speaking to um, team officials who say that uh, Kylian Mbappé actually took his very first steps as a baby behind me here on this pitch and um, so it's very very uh, symbolic and people are coming here to, um, to gather together to watch and uh, people saying they're, they're very happy that Mbappé has um, stuck to his roots, he hasn't let uh, the fame go to his head even though um, there's actually a building uh, with a mural, a huge mural of his, of his face here in Bondi. Um, He's still um, donating uh, his salary from each match to, uh, to a charity helping uh, uh, disabled children to, uh, to do sports. There's a lot of pride there today in uh, Bondy. Now, Paris's suburbs often get very bad press, largely for social problems. Do you think this World Cup is presenting a different image of these neighbourhoods? Yeah, it's, it's often uh, associated with, uh, with things like... Um, Poverty, high crime rates, uh, there's very high unemployment, uh, a lot of poverty. And uh, some people I've been speaking to here saying uh, they wish there were there were more positive stories that made it into the media. And uh, so uh, this one, like, a huge international story. Um, I was speaking to one lady who was actually, who worked in the in Bappi's uh, school when he was a child and she still works in that school. She's saying it's such a good feeling to see all the, all the local children there uh, so motivated and inspired by Mbappé and apparently there's been a, a huge surge in uh, in young people wanting to take up football and, and the team is even struggling uh, to cope with all the, the new recruits.